Hi everyone, today is Monday, September 14, and I just wanted to say um, greetings from the Global Economic North. Um, I'm not sure what to call this video, something about the problem with education in Canada, and um, I was just re I was just watching this um, news reporting by this Canadian news agency called Rebel News. Now we have other news media, and um, I won't say who they are because I don't want to give them free advertising. But the journalism in Canada is very low level compared to. Um, other places that I've been in the world where the journalism is fantastic, especially in the global south. So, um, you know, I have to choose kind of the, the worst of the worst, the least worst of the worst. And um, so Rebel News is not bad. Sometimes, you know, their reporting is a little bit like they're a little... Um, they can come across as being kind of ignorant, but I think that of what we have available in Canada, um, I watch them. So um, this reporting was by um, Kian Bext, and um, <clears throat> he was talking about this book that is being taught in a in a school in Bride Creek, Alberta, and um, it's it's for it's on the grade three, grade four curriculum. The name of this book is called The Lotteries Plus One by this Emma Donoghue, and this Miss Donoghue person is from Toronto. So, what's really interesting to me is first of all. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the book according to this reporting. Um, I've never read the book myself. Um, I don't think I want to read the book. But um, it's basically this book about a polygamous, homosexual, and lesbian blended household with seven kids and, um, you know, with transgender children as young as four years old. And what's really interesting, and I wish I could show you this, but um, the illustrations, you know, when I was going to school, you know, growing up in Western Canada, um, you know, I never learned anything about black history, and I'm a black female, I identify as black female, I walk black in my life, I don't do any interracial crap. And um, I'm heterosexual, so and I'm also non-religious, so uh, or no, I'm a non-religion person. So um, I never learned anything about Black history, and then when it came to Native history, the only thing that I learned about was how this this mixed race Native mixed with Europeans or white and they call themselves Métis in Canada. I just learned about how this um, Métis was hanged. His name was Louis Riel and how he was a great person. But I didn't learn anything about the indigenous natives in Canada and it wasn't until I was in university that um, I was taking this, this literature class and uh, I read this poem that was written by um, a native person, a native female, and the contents in that poem led me to question what this thing called a residential school was. And so um, I'll never forget that poem. That kind of led me to explore what this residential school thing was in Canada. And then I remember um, ending up with the um, getting in touch with the at the time it was called the Plains Indians Cultural Survival School which was based in Calgary Alberta in southwest Calgary 
And I remember speaking to a teacher there, and it was fantastic because all the teachers were Native. Nothing was whitewashed, and it was very, you know, focused on trying to understand the culture of the Indigenous community in Canada. And I've heard since that, um, you know, they relocated the school somewhere else, so I don't even know what's happened. And the property was actually bought out and um, sold to a big box store. So it's kind of sad because there's a lot of ignorant people in Canada, and they could have gone to a school like that to learn something about the history of natives in Canada. So I never learned anything like in my basic 12 years of schooling from grade 0 to grade 12. I never learned anything about the natives in Canada. So it wasn't, like I said, until university that I, I, was, I was exposed to the, the, um, the existence of these things called residential schools. So, um, in this reporting, Mr. Be Keenan Kean Bexday, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but properly, but um, he basically was talking about this book in, that's being taught in a school in Bright Creek, Alberta, and it's a grade three class, and it's this book about polygamy, where you have two gay couples, you have the male version, which is gay, and then you have the female version, which is lesbians, and then they live in this one household, and they have seven kids, and the villain in the story is a white grandfather who has dementia and is very conservative. So, um... I don't know how a book like that would even be allowed to be on sort of in the curriculum, especially in Alberta. And second, this book, it's called The Lottery, and um, let me see, it's, it's about this polygamous household, and uh, you know, they, they won the lottery, and you know, they don't work, um, you know, they're kind of these extremist activist people, like, it's just, it's sad, it's really sad, because if you can prioritize that over Native history, then something is really wrong with this country, like, I share different videos about just the experiences being in Canada, and you know what, it doesn't stop, like, you know, these people... I was just looking at some of the um, footage on this reporting and even the illustrations like when I was growing up I never saw any books with like you know the person of color or the native person it was just always white everything and how great whites were and you know I was sort of like exposed to this garbage for 12 years of learning about how great white people were and basically every other non-white community in the world was non-existent. It was pathetic. So, um, in this book, and as it was reported, um, you know, it talks about the smells that the, the kids experience when they're in bed with the two gay dads, and it vilifies, you know, the, the grandpa person who's white, a white male who's um, heterosexual and, you know, just conservative, meaning he believes in nuclear families and stuff like that. So how does a book like that even get into the curriculum? And one of the questions that they showed a picture of this author, this Emma Denigue person, it's a white female. And, uh, again, why is it that, you know, their perspective, like, she's basically writing her own perversion into this story, so why 
does she get sort of the right to have her books her book distributed in the school curriculum like you would think that you know they would prioritize native books and sort of native history but it's all this like sort of blurring of stuff you know and showing how screwed up things can be you know that is what is being commercialized and you know these these people are actually making a good living from this and I was looking at some of the illustrations that were being showed in this or shown in this um, reporting by this Mr. Bextay from Rebel News Bex and you know you see the little black face with the with the afro with a transgender looking female and then you see two males and then you see you know some kids with like coloring in their on their skin so nine white kids and white kids like what kind of stupid statement are you trying to say like I'm a black female and I identify as black I don't do interracial mixing crap stuff and uh you know I try to go to university to educate myself and just learn about different things and um you know it's it's you know I don't even see it's not until I go into my social media and I only have one social media and I have over 600 friends from the United States and outside of Canada and uh it's only when I go into that social media that I could see black on black relationships, black on black nuclear families with like, you know, lots of children and, you know, successful black families and happy black husbands with their black wives. Like, that's where I see all this stuff. And, um, you know, I don't see anything in the newspaper like even when you walk around in to different neighborhoods where I am in central Canada central east Canada um, you know you'll just walk around in neighborhoods and the neighborhoods where you see a lot of like non-white folk is where you see a lot of liquor advertisements a lot of advertisements about interracial relationships but then when you go into the predominantly white communities, you know, you'll see like white on white, heterosexual families, you know, advertisements about investing in your future and, you know, stuff that is meaningful. You don't see like these liquor advertisements or, you know, these really like stupid messages about liberalizing the world. So, um, on that note, I just wanted to say, you know, I hope that parents can really take the time to see what their kids are being taught. Now, as a black single parent growing up with, um, I just had one child, it was really hard. It was really hard to focus on just trying to, um, have a roof and pay for basic expenses like it was very very difficult so um I know what the struggle is like and um I was very young at the time but that's I think that's another video I just didn't know a lot of things and I got into a situation where um I had a child with a mixed race person who was black, uh, black mother, white father, and I tell you, it was the biggest mistake. I, I just, the child was not the mistake, but interacting with a person like that, of that mixed race, was a big mistake. So, um, if I had known back then what I know now, there's no way I would have even gotten involved with those type of men and I have to say it like that and it can come across as kind of um 
kind of segregating but um I'm sorry I love my black men so on that note um I just hope people do pay attention to what their children are being exposed to um it's really sad that this miss what's her name Emma Donoghue Donoghue it's really sad that you know her her sort of fantasy was privileged and then standardized in the education system in Alberta I think that's pretty pretty clever of her and um, it's sad because it's just another example of sort of this um, way that these European folk they have all their literature written into these curriculums and then you know you might have like the odd person of color but you know it's it's not it it's 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 like this version of something that has this adaptation of this stupid queer theory thing so I'm sad that I didn't have more kids but I was only gonna have kids with the right person and like I said I don't do interracial stuff but I did learn my lessons so on that note just pay attention to what you know is happening in these schools and um, you know just talk to your kids and just have that open communication with them because you know child protection services like they're they have disrupted a lot of people's lives in Canada, especially especially single parents that are not white. Um, excuse me, black women, a lot of native women. They've had their kids taken away, placed into these white homes, and the kids end up really confused. So, um, on that note, just pay attention to this thing called education in Canada and um, I hope this school in Alberta in Bride Creek um, ironically the the principal didn't even read the book but um, you know Alberta just protect yourself protect yourself and you don't want to become like diversity Ontario Ontario is so screwed up it's not even funny just problem after problem and it's it's a very hopeless place but um on that note thank you for watching my video my video and if you have any comments please do leave your comments and um when i have the opportunity i will definitely get back to you so thank you again have yourself a very nice morning afternoon evening wherever you are in the world thank you bye